Hi, I'm Jeff Scoop with Beyond Barriers and my co-host, Acacia Dietz. And our special guest this week on the program is Asma Jama from uh, Minnesota. How are you doing, Asma? I'm good. How are you guys? Hi. Good. So um, we'd really, we're really honored to have you on the program. And um, for our for our listeners that are, are watching this and, and listening to this today um, on the internet and on the various different radio and podcast uh, platforms and um, all that, um, I think your story is really incredible. It's, it's powerful. It's moving. I, I know I had uh, seen you on a, on a program, on a documentary and, um, and uh, it, it's one of those, it's one of those stories I think that, so many people can learn from and that's why we wanted to have you on the program today is is to teach you know to teach people what what hatred and what misunderstanding people and how how uh these things in our society where people have these opinions of people they don't even know um it was put very eloquently by a good friend of mine daryl davis he said how can someone hate me when they don't even know me? And I think that really applies to Asma's story uh, today. And I'm going to let you uh, tell us a little bit about you, please. Okay. Hi. I've done this so many times. Sometimes I'm like, oh, blank, but yeah. So um, my, should I talk about what happened? Please. Yeah. Okay. So um, uh, 2015, October 31st, me, my cousins, and um, my four nieces went to um, Applebee's in uh, Coon Rapids. We've been going to this Coon Rap Applebee's in Coon Rapids for so long that it was just our go-to place. So um, we went there like every other day and we just sat. Um, so the waitress said 20 minutes. Okay, so when the waitress came to t take us to our seat, uh, we were just talking in Swahili. Um, and if it was such an innocent conversation because we were just refusing, we were talking about not to give the kids sweets because it was already after 7 p.m. So when we sat down, we were sit, we were actually, um, my back was, uh, on this side was Jody and her husband. So as we were sitting down, we had someone say, oh, if you're not speaking English, uh, you should not be here. So I turned around slowly and I was like, oh, man, I mean, we have kids um, and we do speak English. So I thought it was over, you know, two grown-ups that say understand each other, but no, I think the moment I opened my mouth and I spoke English to her, it aggravated her more. So um, she just started going, like her tone changed. She was yelling, she was screaming. Um, and then I think uh, we got tired of it. So we called the manager over so we wanted to be moved so um the manager came it was a woman first um and she said oh i'm gonna throw both of you out and i'm like what are you talking about we just want to be moved what do you mean i'm gonna throw you both out so the uh, the guy manager comes he's very nice he sits down with me and we are talking and then i hear her husband say jody let's go so i'm thinking oh my god finally we could get we could get to eat with peace so I just wanted to glance at who this person was. And that's the moment that she got to, she had the beer mug in her hand and she just threw it. Yes, and I, for a, a, a little while, I was so confused what had happened. And I was already bleeding too much too, that I was going in and out and I could hear them, people saying they're running away, something like that. Then. After that, I don't know what happened. All I know is um, there was police and EMT with me in the um, ambulance and the police kept shaking its head and it's like, I don't understand why somebody would do something like this. So, yeah. So this, and this took, so this took place in a public area in Applebee's in front of children as, yes. as well. Yes. And, and, and other people who were dining as well and their children. So it was, um, it was it was it, it was crazy because we've been to that Applebee so many times that I never thought something like that would happen. But then when it happens, you're like, wow! I you know after 20, 20 um, uh, at, um, September 11, 11, and whatever happened happened, and nobody uh, I mean there was 
a backlash to the Muslim community, but I never saw anything. Like I would just see people looking at us like we are just saying something, that's it. But then you come to 2015 when you think that we have passed so many things that we are healing and we, you know, we are trying to. And then this happens and it takes you back and you say, wow, it just, it, it shouldn't happen. I mean, I mean, it shouldn't have happened to um, 2001 and it shouldn't happen 2015. It shouldn't happen today, but it does happen. These are the things that, you know, when people hate you and they don't know anything about you and they feed off of that hate and uh, all they want to do is harm someone. That's where I get to, I feel bad because if you knew who I was, I don't think you would just easily want to hit me because I'm just, I was just your average girl who just goes to work, buys makeup stuff, talks about dinner, where are we going? That's it. Like my life wasn't about like I was in, in, a, in a group, like I was, you know, radicalized, nothing. I was just your everyday average, you know, but then I guess hate is hate is hate is hate. So when that happened to you, like, I can't even imagine how traumatic it is because here you are, you know, you're just being a person. You're there with your family, wanting to have a good time. And then all of a sudden, somebody just out of the blue because of fear and because they don't know who you are and does hor horrendous, like... I, I can't even, like, it, it brings me to tears to even think about it. Like, so how are you able, because I know you've been on a couple of different uh, things and we've spoken out and everything else. Like, obviously, there's a period of time where you have to deal with everything and all of that. But how are you able to go from something so traumatic and so tragic and turn it into something positive like what you're doing now like how does that look for you like um it's I mean f coming from the outside for me it's completely inspirational like I think it, it's it's amazing and it says a lot about you and it says a lot about your character but um like for the listening audience like how do you go from something so traumatic and tragic and I'm sure you still deal with things to this day with it to doing yeah. what you're doing now like does that empower you in some way, do you think? Like yeah. doing what you do now? Yes. So I'll, I'll, I'll talk about that. Uh, so when it happened, um, I was in a lot of pain. Um, and then a friend of mine took the picture. So I had, she kind of took the pic one of my pictures and she cropped it and she took the other one and she put them together, not thinking that it was going to go viral. So I'm in pain. I'm taking a lot of medical, I, I, like I was in pain and all of a sudden the phone doesn't stop ringing and it's WCCO, our local. So um, they came home, they just asked me a couple of questions and I answered them and that's how it just blew up. I didn't get time to sit, think about it and um, process what happened so it was like get go like this go here go there everybody wanted to do something I was just I, I I don't know if it's a part of me that wanted to say no but I didn't want to say no maybe it's a good thing I didn't say no because for four years it literally I adrenaline so it made me think I was okay right so I was telling Jeff so um last year I was in New York for my last like um speech after the speech, I felt, when I went back to the room, I wasn't the same. I felt um, different. I, I, I was crying. So I called my sister and I was like, um, I'm in trouble. And she goes, what do you mean? I was like, I, I just don't know how I feel. I feel like, um, you know, that uh, sometimes I just want to shut off my brain. Um, and then she said, uh, what time are you coming in? I'm like, why do you care? She goes, I, I need you to come in and I'm going to come pick you up. So I'm glad that I called her because she, um, that's when I realized that I, the trauma is a big deal and you have to deal with it. it. There is no way 
you're going to get better without dealing with the trauma because um, I hit rock bottom. There was no way out. There was not even a speech that would help me. So, um, so from there, I see a therapist now and a psych um, psychologist. Um, I feel much better. Um, I have good days and bad days still. Um, and that's what I want people to understand. When you hate someone and you have no idea who they are and you, you, you want to leave your anger, like this um, maybe entitlement that um, you feel like we came like from, you know, this um, third world countries and we're here and we're here to take things from you, but you don't know what struggles we have. Um, and then you, uh, conflict, you just decide to, to, to take matters in your own hand and just hit someone is where I can't fathom. Like, I would never do that as my character. I don't care what you have to say to me. I don't think hurting someone else is, 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 is the way to go about it, but it happened and I had to deal with it. And it's hard. It's really hard when pe nobody tells you that trauma has to be dealt with, you know, and, um, oh yeah. Yeah, I feel I'm in a good place now. Um, I know that um, I'm never going to be the same, but um, I like the person that I'm becoming. This new, I am kind of fond of the person that I'm becoming. So I don't have to necessarily go back to who I was, but I think I'm going to be a better version of myself. So that to me is... Uh, it's better than anything else. So that's amazing. That that's, is that's really, that's a, an inspirational. And, you know, people think in, in, a, in a situation like this, one moment in, in a restaurant and a stranger that you don't even know hits you uh, out of nowhere. I, I don't think the average person, and this is why I felt like your story is, is so incredible and so powerful and why it's so important for people like, us that had been involved in hate groups in the past for us for both of us and a lot of the people that we work with it has been hearing the trauma and hearing the human seeing the humanity of others from you know of what they viewed before as you know the so-called enemy that they didn't even know but hearing that seeing that touching the humanity of of, of someone else and experiencing that is so incredibly moving and powerful and that's one of the things that we use to to reach people and, and i just it's almost unfathomable to to put yourself in a situation where you're having dinner at a restaurant and somebody just hits you with a with a, a mug and i don't think it's it's so incredible that here now you're you've been scarred for life and it's not just that but the, the people don't think like that one moment of anger or rage there has you're dealing with it now for, for years and it's affected you in this manner and they didn't even know you it was not no. it, was, it was simply and what what the listeners need to remember is that this is america all of us were immigrants at one point in time uh you know we were just talking a little bit ago my yeah. my mother and her family came i'm first generation as well so I mean, we we have something in common <laughs> In, yeah, in the, with my nephews, right, I know. Right. So, so, you know, they don't, we, we all came over, our, our families came over at one point in time, and they spoke different languages, yes. you know, and they had to learn English and adapt and all that sort of thing, and, and that's just, that's part of being an American, and one thing I think is so important, and I don't remember if it was you and I talking before, or if it was something I saw you on a, on a program once before, but you're very proud of being an American. Are you, I mean, don't, don't let me put the words in your mouth. No, 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 I'm, I'm proud of every part of me, right? I'm proud that when I, when I came here, I was already asthma. So I wasn't gonna come here and just decide to throw the part of me that made me me. And that sometimes is what I think people who don't know you and think that they have a say in your life. And then they say, speak, I came to America, I was speaking English. Um, English for us was not a foreign language because uh, we were in Kenya. So we were speaking English. I came here, I was, English was my first language. Swahili is my second language and Somali is my third language. So 
it's crazy that somebody would hit you not knowing that you can speak English, but because you're speaking another language where, you know, that's what makes me me though. Every part of me makes me asthma. So the American part that I'm here now and I'm proud to be an American also, um, where I come from and being Somali and being an immigrant and being Muslim and being a black Muslim woman, that those are things that make me who I am. There's no part of any of that, that if I subtract, then I'm not who I am. And people need to understand that we don't have to kumbaya, all of us. We don't have to hold hands and sing and say, you know, hey, we love each other. No, 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 no but we have to respect each other to a place where you say that, for example, if somebody decides to come and attack America, we are all going to be on the same side, yep. right? We are all going to defend, yep. right? So that's the oath we took. So you're going to defend. So if I'm on the same team with you, then you have to realize that it doesn't matter what we look like. We don't have to look the same. I think the world would have been very boring if we had one language and we all looked the same. The, the differences makes the world beautiful. It, it's, it's crazy for people to think that we just have to speak in English when there's so many beautiful languages out there that, uh, that make people who they are and you have to embrace that. When I came to America, I had, um, yes, I had a vision of America that was, that, you know, is beautiful that, um, when we were growing up, we used to look at movies and think that this is the place that, you know, you want to be, that that's it. Once you go there, that's it. Life is perfect. So yes, we came, life was perfect for a while, but then all this hate just makes you um, want to just pull back a little bit and say, you know, we need to stop. We need to stop. Everybody needs to just breathe because at the end of the day, your, your, the hate eats the person that hates, you know, it eats you up. I had to forgive the lady that did this to me because I didn't want to hold on to that hate. And I wanted her to realize that we are the same. Like we, I'm human, she's human. We both bleed red. It does not matter like if I'm covered like I am now. Or, um, or oh my God, Asma's Muslim. So she has this, they call it a towel anyways. No, it's a hijab. So it, it's, it doesn't necessarily mean I'm a bad person. It doesn't necessarily mean I'm not American enough. It doesn't necessarily mean that I don't speak the language. It's just that we have to um, let people breathe, let people be. Um, that's all I want. Like for me, if I get one person to listen to what we say and say, you know, th these are three people from different backgrounds, but look, they can come together. They can talk about these things and maybe then we can reach people who will understand that it doesn't necessarily matter. At the end of the day, we all go to sleep at night, we wake up in the morning, we struggle. There's some days I don't wanna wake up. I'm like, oh my God, uh, I don't wanna, you know, but you wake up, you work, you do this. And, and I think all of us do it. When you go on the train in the morning, you see all these people, old, young, everybody's fighting for the same thing, like the American little dream, whatever you, yeah. yours is for you. So I hope that we can get there one day. Um, and with all this division and all this hate, really honestly has no place in the world. We, we just have to realize I, if I don't like the so-and-so, that's fine. We have other things in common that makes us human, that makes us Americans, but we don't have to like hold hands and start dancing together, no. Exactly. Tell us a little bit about, and what I think is really, really incredible about you is the, what you had said about forgiveness. That, I, I think, I don't think a lot of people could do that, asthma. I don't think a lot, of, I mean, that's what I find really special and really incredible about your story is that that's one of the first things that you, that you spoke about that, that I heard was that forgiveness. And that just, it, it sort of like takes your breath away. You just go, Oh my gosh. And I want to hear about that. Like, I mean, so it took, so, okay. So after from the incident, when it happened to the court date, it was almost a year, right? In a year, you go through a lot of different changes. We are not, even when it happened uh, on the 31st of 2015, and then the court date was October, I think 20th, 2016, people didn't seem to understand that that's a year. In a year, it has 12 months. Right. So from 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 
when I, the beginning, when I was hurt, um, different emotions, obviously. And then when you start healing, it's different emotions and you go through all these things. But after a year, and then we come to court and I really never wanted it to be published. I really never wanted the apology to be seen, but the, 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 the judge was like, Asma, we can't let you be with her alone in a room. And I'm like, well, there's police everywhere. We could just go there and I can just tell her. But then they decided to do it in the courtroom. Um, WCCO was there, they filmed it. And uh, people thought maybe I did it because I wanted like, no, I did it because I needed to let go. And the only way I was gonna let go of the hate because if I was holding on to that hate, imagine where I would be today. I would just be a hateful person. I would be like, I don't want to do this. I don't want to talk to this white person. I don't, why? When one person is the one that did this. And I figured, let me just talk to straight to her from my heart instead of even, you know, anybody else being involved. So I talked to Jodi Passe, uh, me and her. And I think that was a proud moment for me because I looked her in the eye and I was like, you know, I, I forgive you. And it's true. I, I, I also told her, I know in a year that her life was also overturned, right? It's not like she, she, she was living, you know, in a, in a la-la land. No, her life was overturned. They took away guns from her. I think her marriage kind of um, was starting to like, uh, so she had gone through a lot. So I, I also thought about her as a human being and everything that she had to go through and everything that I had to go through. So this was like our common denominator you know, forgive and just let her be. Uh, and, you know, and, and, and I can move on with my life. Wow. Well, yeah, wow. I mean, that, <clears throat> that's absolutely incredible. I, I mean, how did, <laughs> you got me almost at a loss for words here, Asma. Um, yeah. I, I'm picturing it in my head, um, how, that, how that looks and how, how did that, how did that feel for you doing that Do you, was it was it liberating in a sense like it, yes. it le left that please yes it, it, it felt good I left the heart that she inflicted on me on that in the courthouse that day because I, to I told her my piece you know I, I, I forgive you but um, you know it's not okay to do things like this to people it's not I mean uh, I don't know what her issue was. I still don't know what her issue is, but her, her, they, they, they said that she was drinking, but I've been with friends who drink and drink and drink and drink, and I've never seen anybody beat somebody just because they were drunk, because they were wearing a hijab. So that doesn't make any sense. But no, for me, it was a matter of survival. I had to survive. So for me to survive, I have to forgive her and let, leave all this anger this 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 pain this question that i used to ask myself every morning why me why does a human being think they're better than me why why would somebody sit somewhere and feel like oh i'm better because i'm white and she's nobody so i can actually hit her and even kill her if she had a gun i believe i wouldn't be here honestly to god if she had a gun she would kill me she was going for the jugular so um i thank god every day that it wasn't a gun and i'm here for a reason um and the reason is to tell people, yes, uh, we, we have to forgive in order to live. I mean, you have to, you have to. I don't, I don't believe in holding grudges and things like that because we only have one heart and we only have one mind. If my mind or my heart is full of like different, uh, like, oh my God, yeah, I don't want to forgive her. So I'm just, you know, I, uh, I'm the one who suffers. So for me, it was a matter of, you know, this is where I'm starting my healing. So I'm gonna leave it here. I walked out of there and I never thought of her again. You know, I never um, sat somewhere and thought of her and uh, in, a, in, in any way, in a negative way, I always, um, her sister is a very good friend of mine. So I would tell her, I would tell her, you need to go talk to her. Sometimes people change when, when, and then her sister would be like, no, she'll never change. She's like that. So I, in that aspect, I push her sister to go talk to her every time we meet because I feel like, you know, we all make mistakes. And if we are not going to give somebody a second chance, then what does that say about us as a society? Yeah. 
so let me back up just a, just a, uh, a minute here because this is very interesting. You Now, you made friends with this lady's sister then after this all happened? Yes. Is, is that... Wow. Yes. Wow. Dawn, okay, so Dawn reached out to me on Facebook after it happened. So we, she said, I'm sorry. And then I was like, you don't have to be sorry. You didn't do it. Your sister did. Um, stop apologizing for other people's, you know. Um, so, and then she was like, so we went uh, together, we did story corp together. We, 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 we normally talk now and then we, we check on each other. So it's crazy that I got, and then when she came to court, she came for me and not her sister. So that's like, that to me, that in itself was like my healing moment because they, this is the somebody that beat you, right? And this is her sister who's saying what she did is wrong. And I'm with you. So I don't think there's any, uh, that's huge. That's huge. So that's really, that's an incredible, incredible story. So I, I'm, yeah. I, I did not even know that. That is yeah. really, that's special. I mean, that's a, that's a really a special bond. And, and um, I mean, this, this is, I mean, this is why I, I think this, this story is so incredible, but what, really I, I hope resonates with people is not just this incredible strength that you have and and I, I'm glad we're able to do this over over um, zoom you know where we can see each other because you really are like this bright shining light of positivity and, and it's 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 good vibes and, and good energy that you you put out there and that's why it's so important that people hear this and they realize this wasn't not an easy thing for you to, to deal with. And I don't know if, if you're comfortable talking about it or, or not. Um, that's totally up to you. But struggling with this type of thing and the PTSD and, um, we, we know comes with it is, is right. it, I want people to think before they do something like this to anyone else ever again to realize how that harms that person, no, not only is this going to screw up your life for doing it because you're going to be in big trouble, yeah. but more importantly, so what if you're, mess, yeah, you're messing around somebody else's life, right? Yeah. You're messing around with somebody else's life that didn't have no, anything to do with do with anything. nothing. Like I had nothing to do with anything. When, when we went there, we were just going to eat and then go home. Like every other time we go there. So I had nothing to do with anything. She started to pick a fight with us and then it ended up in being this big, um, huge uh, thing. And uh, the one thing I want people to, to understand is when you hit someone, there's a human being behind it. You're not hitting a wall, you know? Um, I might not dress like you, I might not look like you, you know? Um, I'm, I might have an accent, but at the end of the day, I'm human. So um, you're hurting someone else who, I don't know if, uh, I don't think I did anything wrong that day, but then sometimes I find myself saying, maybe we should, but then you kind of realize at the end of the day that um, what is meant to happen will happen, right? right. Um, what I want people to understand is before you take a gun to shoot someone, before you hit someone, before you decide that, oh my God, I hate this person so much, I wanna just, do something bad, you have to think you will go to jail. And uh, the person that you did, whatever you did to, also has a family, also has a life, also has a mom. My mom cried and cried and cried and cried. And uh, she saw it from CNN in Kenya. So, and then she called me because I kind of lied. I said, I didn't tell her the, 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 how bad it was. But then I didn't know the next morning, CNN was gonna just blast it out in the whole world. And then my mom calls me and she's bawling. And I'm like, I'm sorry, I didn't know you were gonna see it, but yeah, you know. So they have to realize that there's a human being behind. There's a human being that you're messing with. There's a human being. PTSD, I used to think, only affected people who went to war like the soldiers that came back. I didn't understand what PTSD was until I had to face my trauma. And then um, all these questions that you ask yourself and then uh, like, uh, why? Why would she think it was okay? Um, I mean, do we really 
have a uh, superior people in the world and the other people are just, you know, so you ask yourself a lot of questions, but the end of the day is the feeling. It's not, it's not cosmetic. It's not a lie. The feeling that you feel like total, it broke me. It broke me. Like I, the person I used to be and now who I am, it completely changed everything about me. So that's a big deal. Somebody has to understand before you, you can hate because people unlearn hate, but don't take the hate to another level where you're going to damage somebody else's life. It's not worth it. That's, um, so you're, you were kind of trying to protect your mom after what happened to you. So she didn't realize how terrible it was that, and, and that's what, one of the things that, that we try to say too, about people that, um, when you're doing something like this, I'm so glad you said it because it's not just affecting you. It's affecting your whole entire um, family. Everyone around you, you know, is, is affected by this. And this is one of the things that I think when people are, I, I try to analyze this stuff psychologically, like, okay, when you go and hurt someone, when someone goes and does something else terrible to somebody, they're not just hurting them, but that whole extended family. And, it, and exactly. it's, it's, it's the trauma that, and I know, I know, I mean, we've discussed it before and I, I know, um, I can't, I can't put myself in your shoes and totally understand it, but I, I see the, um, compassion and, and, the, and the empathy and it's just, it's, it's incredible. And that's why I think people really need to hear this story and not just hear the story, but let it sink in, let it, resonate let it settle you know in your soul and in your heart how that uh, how that one moment in a bar doing something like striking someone like that altered the course of so many lives and what yeah. what the, that's why it's so incredibly brave what you're doing because you didn't you don't have to get out and speak out like this but because you do you're changing so many lives you may you have no idea how many lives you're touching asthma Really. I, 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 I speak up because I feel like this. Uh, everything happens to us for a reason, whether we are in a hate group or whether we are on the opposite side of receiving the hate. It's, it, it's, we're all human beings and we all have um, things that maybe we need ourselves to like maybe change or maybe go there. So I speak up because I don't want people to think that it's okay for someone to think they're better than you and hit you with a beer mark. And I don't want people to think that it's okay to, to dehumanize another human being. That's not okay at all, because that's what happened. You dehumanize somebody by just hitting them and your reasoning was, oh, you, you need to speak English. Like, I wish it was even, you know, somebody asked me and said, okay, so what's the worst case scenario? I said, I wish we had even had a cut fight. You know, I, I, I understand why. She hit me with the beer mug. There was no cut fight. There was nothing. It was just somebody who was really mad and me saying, hey, 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 we have kids here, please. We just, you know, and me, I'm thinking she understood, but then, you know, so if I sit with this and, 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 and I don't talk about it, then I don't know what, what the purpose of what I went through is. There has to be a reason. There has to be a purpose. So my purpose is I need to talk about it so people can understand that um, hate is a bad thing. And when you hate someone for no reason at all, it's also a bad thing. And when you take matters in your own hand to, 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 to hurt someone else because of your hate, then we have a huge problem in this country that we need to fix. Right. Absolutely, absolutely. And I think like, it's amazing how like, you've chosen to, you know, speak out against hate because you were also on the receiving end of it. And it speaks a lot for your character. I really believe it. And people need to Thank hear you. it. People need to also hear that, you know, even being on the receiving end of hate, you can turn it around and show yes. people that there is a life after it. There is a life after trauma whether it's hate or anything else that life doesn't stop there 
No. And you can use it and turn it into something good. It's still horrible and it's tragic. And, you know, like you said, your life was changed that day forever. Forever. Yeah, forever. You know, but. But I mean, it, it also changed in a good way. The person that I am sitting in front of you today, I really respect this asthma much more. And uh, I really like who I am becoming because I think I was just a. I wasn't, I was never selfish. So I was just this girl who just used to buy lipstick, but I wasn't into politics. I wasn't into whatever that's going on. But I, there's somebody hit there, somebody there, there's an alt-right group. There's, I used to be like, where are we ever going to see these things? It's like movies, right? Right. Yeah. So for me, it was like in the movies, I'll see these things. It's not reality. So, but when it becomes reality, you're like, whoa, you know? And then you realize that it's not only me, the whole world, like our country right now is so divided. There's so much unnecessary hate that is gonna cause a lot of people, uh, a lot of mental health problems. Mm -hmm. And people don't seem to understand that when you're, when you're doing the hate towards a person who has nothing to do with your anger, nothing to do with whatever that you, you, you feel, you know, um, then you have to understand that um, for me, uh, it, it, that the reason why I speak against is I want you to understand you can hate someone, but you're, um, who are you? Who gave you the, 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 the you know, the, the, who told you you were better than me, that you could hit me? Um, that is what, uh, and uh, there, there's a lot of Somalis here in Minnesota who go through hate crimes and they never report it. Mm. You know, they never report it because one, um, this guy in Wilma, I think he was very new, so his English wasn't good. So he was scared to come forward. Can you imagine? And he was beaten really badly, really badly. Almost, they left him in the cold, almost dying. And when I reached out to him, he said, I don't want to go forward with anything. And that breaks me, you know, I, I, I went forward. I spoke about mine. Uh, people rallied together with me. People stood up for me. So I had all these people I didn't know just become family at one day. I had all these people rallying for me, calling me, sending me cards from New York, from all over America, just to say, thank you. You know, we are sorry what you went through. So I wanna, that was me. I felt like I had a lot of love, you know, I was protected. People were hugging me like, you know, so I wanted to be that for other people. But then when somebody tells you, um, I don't wanna go forward with it because, you know, I'm just new in the country and my English is not good. These are the things that baffles me, you know? Right. So this person has to go through all this by themselves. Mm. And you never know what damage they left him with. So exactly. that's where, why I speak about it. I want people to understand that we can coexist. We are grown ups. We are big people. We can coexist. We've been coexisting all our lives. What's going on? What changed? <clears throat> you know? Exactly. We can coexist, we can respect each other because at the end of the day, we live in this beautiful country um, that gives us all this freedom, everything that we do, you, you, you get up in the morning, whatever you want to do, whoever you want to become, America gives it to you, right? Um, that's why people like uh, Elhan get to be Congresswomen. So right. it's, it's a big deal. So um, I think that we, you guys, what you're doing too is amazing. Um, for me, when you come from your your stories and your background, and then you're this here talking to someone like me, I was telling Jeff the first day I met, uh, what was his name? Chris, Christian Sipoli, I think, Jeff. Um, I told him, I, he's, he, he said, I, I'm a, I'm, I, I, was, I ran away. I was like panicking, right? And then he was like, Asma, come here. And I'm like, no, 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 no. No, 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 you're a white supremacist. Probably you hate me, you want to kill me. So he's like laughing. So he pulled me and I hugged him and I realized he was such a loving guy. And he was talking about it and he was giving us the videos of all his life and what he was doing. And then I realized that, you know, um, it's beautiful when somebody realized it, that they were in the wrong. And they, 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 now he's hugging me and telling me, you, can't, you don't have to be scared of me. I'm on your side, right? right. So um, I still have those mm -hmm. moments where when I go somewhere, I have to look at the exits because yep. regardless of what anybody tells you, 
Maybe in a few years down the road, it's going to go away. Maybe with therapy and all that I'm doing. But for now, it's like my antennas are always up. I have to go in somewhere. The exit is the first thing I, I look yep. for. And then I look at the room like, you know. Yep. Oh, um, I completely get it. I completely get um, it. And part of that yeah, is so I was, Yeah. Yep. It's, I have to. I have to. That's the only way I feel comfortable. So, um it's it's I've come we've, we've come a long way I mean I've come a long way but yeah I've come from like never wanting to leave the house to leaving the house and traveling and going to talk about this so it I went through phases but I don't think I would uh wish this on anyone else and if it was to happen I'm glad it happened to me because I spoke back I could I could and with the love that I was shown it gave me that um push right. so I'm glad that it, it was me that it happened to her instead of somebody who couldn't um, be able to talk about it you see and that's the selfless the selfless uh, leadership that you're showing right there um, you know putting yourself out front even though as you know it's not easy it's a hard thing to do and, and I, I know I, I know it's hard but you're doing that and you're offering that sort of inspiration to all those voices and all those people like that man that you were just talking about that, yeah. that wasn't able to do it because he didn't have the English or he was afraid. He was new in the and country. And he was just new too. Right. You know, you're, you're, you're the voice, you know, you're the person that can inspire them. And so anybody that's listening to it, that's been a victim of something like this, don't be silent. No, Stop. come forward. Yes. Yes. Come Absolutely. forward, even if you think that you don't want to talk to the authorities, reach out to, um, there's so many organizations, right? Just reach out to someone because if you stay with all that pain, you're going to end up being the one that hates people. And then maybe, maybe that anger, you're going to take it out on someone innocent again, and then it's going to be a vicious cycle. So reach out to someone, do not be silent with this pain, because however you, people think it's just Oh, Asma slept and she woke up and now she's fine. No, you go through every single day. It's a bottle. It's a little thing that's a bottle. So I think um, we send the message that if anybody has ever gone through any kind of hate, reach out, talk to someone. Um, don't be afraid that, yeah, that, that, that because you're new in the country, you're already, um, if you're here and you're here legally and you don't speak the language, well, so many people came to America without speaking English. It's not a big deal, but I understand the, 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 you know, the stigma that minorities are, you know, and that's why he didn't want to come forward. So again, if he, if it was going to happen to anyone, I'm glad it did me because I, I, I actually spoke about it and I'm going to speak about it and I'm going to make sure I'm hard everywhere because I feel like that's the, that's the only outcome I can have mm. is to make sure people understand hate people who are, are giving the hate and the people who are receiving it both right it's a, a vicious cycle that we have to stop somewhere and if, if a person just internalizes it and and keeps it inside not only could they be harmful to someone else in the public but they could cause self-harm they're they're yes. damaging themselves by bottling that up yeah. inside and not doing something about it and then yeah. I, I mean i can't imagine not you know being in that situation and not being able to talk about it or not being yeah. able to, to re, you know have that release or, or um that uh, you know justice for something like that that's that's taken place it's not it's not right but uh, we have so many cases that people are scared to come forward for whatever reason so um if that's why I keep saying, like, if you know you're sitting somewhere and you have this so oh, much pain, the pain, the heart, the hate is going to make you hate people. That's what you have to fight. From either side, where you're the one who is receiving the hate, the person that's giving you the hate, you have to realize that there's a time where you have to draw the line and say, you know what, we can come up with something that's much better for all of us together. And if you feel like white supremacist is your thing and you wanna stay there, that's on you. But please don't, don't think that because of that mentality you have, that if you see me on the road and I'm wearing a hijab, I'm a target. No, you, you can hate me from far, just let me be. Cause I also let you be, you know? I don't go on uh, social media and start looking for white supremacists and make my life like I'm going to put them on the blaster. I'm going, no, I, I let them live their life in peace, you know? So uh, I'm scared of them though. Uh, maybe I shouldn't say that, but um, 
<laughs> I am scared of them, but I think that um, when you talk and you have a voice, there's nothing uh, more powerful than that, so. Absolutely, absolutely. And I mean, it's like, if there's anything like I've been learning, it's that, you know, you can, we're always learning and we are all people, we are all human. And like you speaking out also helps people understand because a lot of, and I'll just be honest, a lot of white people or even Christian religion people have a pre preset notion about Muslim that isn't correct. And a lot of it, much like Jeff said, you know, is like what Daryl Davis said is based on fear. It's fear of the unknown. So yeah. by you speaking out also shows people that, look, this stigma is not correct. This no. is not who we are. This is not, I am a Muslim woman. I am proud to be a Muslim woman, but yes. I'm not your jihadist not, that you see on yes. the TV, yes. you know? And that re my religion, my Muslim religion is not what you see there. So no. it helps, it helps break down those barriers that put we put in between each other whether it's religion yes. whether it's ethnicity whether it's That's you know true. color all yes. of that so like you speaking out against hate and allowing people to see what you have been able to turn your life into and grow as a beautiful woman Thank also you. allows people to see that look what your preconceived notions might be and what those barriers might be look, there's something else. You don't have to be afraid, yeah. you know? So it's, it's, it's very encouraging. And I would love, love, love to do work with you in the future. You know, um, as a woman. I'm open. Also, I was telling like, Jeff, definitely. I think the, our dimension is very different. And that's what is the wow factor. It's like, you know, your backgrounds and my background. So yeah, I mean, it would be really... Another, a different experience um, because mostly the people that invite you to talk are just allies or people who, you know, who understand. It's like it's the people who go and do these bad things like terrorist attacks, they use Islam. So sometimes, how do I put this? Um, before all the Muslims come for me. Um, it's true because we are like you're beaten everywhere you're like oh but I, I i really i push back i don't care who you are sorry but um i know that uh 9 11 was muslims a lot of these terrorist things that happen people um normally have muslims names they they, they say they are muslims but um my religion me as asthma it, it says to me once you open the quran that if you kill one person it's like you've killed the whole mankind mm -hmm. and that's my God telling me that. So why would I want to wear a vest and go and kill innocent people? So we are not the same exactly. type of Muslims. We are not. I'm more of a loving, typical person. Like you live your life. I mean, I have Christian friends. I have Jewish friends. I have atheist friends. It's, 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 it's who you are. It doesn't necessarily matter what, how you, who you're worshiping and how you're worshiping. Right. As long as you can understand that if I was to read the Bible, there's some verses of the Bible that make Christianity look like it's it's violent, yep. right? Absolutely. The same with Islam. If you're going to have your own, uh, open the Quran, read, but then uh, uh, the way we um, see things and and, 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 and and sometimes my brain just loses words. Okay. Um, how we perceive things, right? Mm -hmm. um, you can open the Torah yep. and there's some verses in the Torah that will make you think that Judaism also is like a violent religion. So it's the three Abrahamic religions that came out with books, all three of them. I, the good thing about us, when we were in school, we did uh, the whole religion. So we weren't doing only Islam. We were doing Christianity and we were doing like, you know, oh, wow. uh, the three Abrahamic religions. Yeah. So I can quote verses that would make you think that Christianity is violent mm -hmm. or that the Jewish uh, book, um, the Torah says 
violent stuff, just like the Quran. But you can't tell me that you're going to look at the Bible and say, ah, this verse is, yeah, they look violent, but they don't mean anything. But the Quran, no, that, that's just not going to work, right? Exactly. Uh, we have to be honest and open with one another, another that um, when you read somebody from outside, reading the Bible will be like, oh, Christianity, oh my God, it's eh. You know, yeah. uh, but pe- the Christians, majority of them want to say Christianity is peaceful. And then you want to say Islam is bad because of few people. I get it. And, I, and I'm a human being too. When, when any, anything happens, this is me. I swear I'm not lying. I, I hope they're not Muslim. <laughs> See, why? Why? Because I know that it's going to come back to us. But at the end of the day, um, I don't want it to be a Muslim. I don't want it to be a Christian. I don't want it to be anybody. I just want people to understand that you can't just harm people. You can't do it because we have differences. If you don't think that you're open enough to learn and talk to people, different people, then just, you know, stay in your house, buy dolls that look uh, like a Muslim and just Shoot it in your own house. Nobody's going to come and arrest you, right? Um, and it gives you, and you release that hatred and the, the tension. And the next day when we meet at work, we're good to go, right? So at the end of the day, America has laws. That's the one thing that we have to understand. Yeah. Um, whether if you're white and you decide to beat me, you're going to go to jail. Yep. Right? If you are white and you think you're going to kill me, you're still going to end up going to jail. So our country has laws that we have to abide by yep. but if you really the hate is too bad i'm telling you get dolls whichever color you want beat it up but tomorrow in the morning when you wake up realize that america is a beautiful place mixed everybody from everywhere in the world is here so Absolutely. you have to deal with us whether you like it or not and it's just there yeah, there's not there's no way we're not gonna deal with each other yep. I like I like your your version of of hate uh, reduction therapy there with the with the dolls. <laughs> you gotta, Come up with something apartment. better then. Like get the dolls. <laughs> Let's get it over with, right? <laughs> no, it's really like, good. Like I'll tell you something about hate. So when it happened, I hated Donald Trump because he's the one that came here and spewed something about the Somalis. I will tell you what that hate did to me for two years. I used to hate this man. I just look at him on TV. I'm like, I hate you. Ugh, stop talking. Oh my God, you're annoying me. I used to be the first person on his Twitter. I'm like, go away. But the last two years of his presidency showed me that that hate was just stupid, silly. He says whatever he wants. And he literally doesn't hold a gun to anybody's head and say, you know what? I told you to do this, do this, go do it. No. So I cha- I changed that to that hatred for him to understanding him, mm. you know, as a human being. I mean, regardless of the politics, of course, we are, I'm a Democrat and he's a Republican, but forget about that. As a human being, it made me realize that even him, people put a lot of pressure on him because he says whatever he thinks is good for the day, but... We can't take that and say, literally, he's the cause of all this. Yes, he, he changed the rhetoric. He made it free for people to say, I hate you. He made it free for people to say the N-word. But um, at the end of the day, he's sitting in the White House, right? Have a hundred million things to do. He doesn't even know there's a lady who beat asthma somewhere. So it, the, 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 that's what made me realize that I can't even want to hate him. So I, 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 I doubled down and, and I, I think... People normally on Twitter think I'm crazy because I used to yell at him. And now I'm like, you want a friend? I can come sit at the bunker with you, Mr. President. So I think they think I'm crazy. But yeah, it, 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 it's always good to look at someone and see the humanity instead of like the, the things that they say or how they behave. Uh, uh, under, underneath all of us, we have a heart, you know, and we're human beings. So. Absolutely. Yeah. That's really well put. And that's, that's just it. And I was going to ask you too about being Muslim in America, but I like the way you, the, that you put that because you're, you're absolutely right. I mean, of course you have extremists, even in the movement that we came out of, you had Christian identity, uh, Christian extremists. And of course, in the Muslim religion, you're going to have your yes. ISIS and, and some of your yes. Muslim extremists. Yes. All religions can be twisted and manipulated to, to fit those, those agendas. And that's, 
as like that's a propaganda thing you know and it's it's not healthy and it's not yeah. just there's nothing wrong with judaism with muslim faith with no. the christian faith or any no. of the other ones it's just if you twist them to make them bad you can all three of them yes right. and they're the abrahamic religions that uh like brothers, we all, like, we are just a mirror of each other, especially Christianity and Islam. We are almost similar. The only part that we don't agree with is Jesus. He's the son of God, or for us, he's a prophet. Really, the Quran and the Bible are just two books, the same, the, 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 the birth of Jesus. It's in the Quran, verbatim, like it's in the Bible. So wow. it's just ridiculous for us to have hatred for each other. Well, you can just open the Bible and open the Quran and read and see the, 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 the similarities and you're like, oh, you know. So, but I hope that we can get there one day. I know uh, Rome wasn't built in a day. Um, I've spoken about this for five years. Um, I get really good feedbacks. I get people who say that, they, uh, they, you know, um, they never used to hate people, but that now that they're more involved in trying to... Um, bring awareness to hate. So to me, those are the things that matter. Um, not fame, not money, not, 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 none of that. For me, it's the person that says, you know, um, I listened to you, Asma, and it made me realize that my family has a lot of hate. So I went back and I'm trying to talk to them and they're, they're, they're receptive now. They realize that the hate is, uh, you know, um, they have no reason to hate someone. So those are the feedbacks I get sometimes. Um, and that makes me happy. So it, it's not about anything else. It's just about all of us understanding that at the end of the day, the person that's behind the beer mug or the person that's receiving the beer mug on their face, we're all the same. So yeah. you, you choose your poison. Either you choose to hate someone or you choose to love, which I think love is easier. It's so much easier instead of just waking up in the morning and you're filled with so much hate and you don't know what to do. No, I, I, I believe like when I wake up every morning and I'm, and, I'm, and I'm alive, I open my eyes and I'm like, oh my God, okay, so we're here. The only thing I hate about this is the coronavirus. We are home again. But right. otherwise I wake up in the morning and I'm glad I'm, I'm alive. And I'm like, it's so easy to love than to hate, but... You are 100% right there. Coming, coming from our background, and, and I know I spent 27 years where I was at, waking up being at war with the world every single day. Um, and compared to now, it's like night and day, and it's a, it's a whole new world. So anybody out there that's struggling with hate, that's hearing these stories, believe me, from experience, you don't want to be stuck in that hatred. Love, as Asma said, is 100% better it's easier, it feels better, it's better for you, it's better for your health, for your well-being, yeah. your outlook, and it's better it's for better our, for our world. world. The whole world, yeah, exactly. Yeah, it's better for our children. Um, I, I, I believe like my nephews, they're 15 and 14, and, and literally when you ask them about racism, they don't know what that is. Um, so they have a different, you know, they're Americans, they see the world like Americans, and here I am, an advocate, and they, they, they follow me sometimes when I go to speak and they're looking at me. So when we're in the car, they'll ask me, so do people exist that really hate people like that? And I'm like, where have you been all my life? <laughs> you see me every day. Uh, so, but then that's, that's, that's the beauty about, you know, their life is different. Their, 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 their experiences are different. They're, they're, they're born here. The language, the first language there is English. So I don't think that they feel what we feel, uh, what we have felt. And I don't like them to feel necessarily what we went through has to be what they, they're going to go through. No, right. they have their own life. They will choose their own life. But I show them that, you know, whatever happens to you, you always have to pick the love part and leave the rest um because it doesn't serve you, anybody absolutely and before we let you go um for the evening tell us a little bit about your your project that you that you have going that um okay so yes um okay so a few months ago i was thinking um so i went uh to new york i met with adl but then um some things came up and i decided just i wanted to do it something myself so I, me and my niece, um, she's Canadian. Her name is Asma. Well, mm -hmm. um, and she's starting to get into advocacy and stuff like that because of me. 
Um, so we decided to come up with something that's gonna be, uh, we've never done this before, right? I don't know how to do it, but then, so we have Petals of Humanity. Um, I think there's two videos that I've put there. The, the video one was uh, George uh, Floyd's um, uh, memorial when we went there. Um, somebody just gave me a microphone and I talk me. My problem is I talk. I don't know when to say, okay, I don't want to talk there. So they put me and I talked. And um, so what What the perils of humanity, I want it to be. That's why the word humanity is there is I want everybody to feel included. I want even if you have your 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 quote unquote a white supremacist and you want an avenue, you know where you can come and talk and say, you know, this is why maybe I chose this path. This is why because everybody has a why, right? Why they mm -hmm. decided to choose that path. So I want them to feel free. Like this is for the community. It's not mine. I want every voice to be heard. I want there to be. Uh, dialogue. I just don't want people to cuss each other or anything like that, but it is open for everybody, um, a worldwide forum. So I'm hoping soon um, to get it together, just the podcast and see, uh, again, with the election that's bar bar bugging me, I just want it over because my anxiety wouldn't allow me to do the podcast if I know that we still don't have a president uh, and we don't know what's going to go on, if we're going to get our votes are going to be thrown out or we're going to have another president. I mean, it doesn't really matter that Biden is president or Trump was president. The hate is still there. We, right. we, the citizens have to deal with it. Them, they go to the White House, they have a lot of things to deal with, to be entirely honest. Whoa, this, that, that's us. Yep. The we, the people that pay them. We, the people that stand up. We, the people that vote for them is the ones that suffer with the hate. So that's why we need, you know, so I, that forum is for everybody to just come in there and talk about how, where they are, how they feel. So I think if we all come together and everybody talks uh, and we don't judge each other, I hate judging people. It, it, we, are, we, are, we are a community, we, we are, we, us human beings have become council culture mm -hmm. or we judge. Yep. There's going to be no judgment. You can say whatever you want. Um, just as long as there's no languages have to be correct, you know. Uh, and that's what we were thinking about, a big... Uh, so that's what we came up with. So as soon as we find out who's the president, then I can at least get on and get the first <sighs> podcast out there. For me, necessarily, it's not going to be about, uh, um, let's say, like... Uh, deep, deep, like, let's say, issues. No, me, I just want the world to understand that we can coexist, we can respect each other. And the funny thing is, you can be a white supremacist today, but your, your, your kid, or maybe your grandson, because the world is changing, probably are going to be best friends with my nephew. So it's, 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 it's a matter of us to just make sure that we're connecting dots so that the kids that we have, have a much better world than we did. So, Absolutely. yeah. Love that's it. it. Love it. That, that sums it up. I mean, yes. there's nothing better that, I don't think there's a better statement that could close out this, tonight's program than that, because that's it for the, for the future. Thank you guys for inviting me. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank, Thank you, you so, so much, much for, for coming. coming on. Really, really, really.